Hey, rock fans. Today, we're diving into one of the most unique events in rock history, the Festival Express of 1970. Imagine a train full of legendary musicians, fans and media traveling across Canada for a week of non-stop music and adventure. We're talking Janis Joplin, The Grateful Dead, The Band. These guys were rock royalty, and they were all crammed together on this crazy train, jamming, partying, and basically living the rock and roll dream. Let's get on board. All right, let's talk about the Grateful Dead, man. These guys were like the heart and soul of the Festival Express. Known for their legendary live shows, they were the perfect band to anchor this rolling rock and roll circus. Picture this, you're on a train, cruising through the Canadian wilderness. And suddenly, Jerry Garcia's iconic guitar licks start filling the air. The dead were all about improvisation, man, just letting the music take them where it wanted to go. And that's what the Festival Express was all about too, pure, unadulterated freedom of expression. The dead's music was the soundtrack to this crazy journey. They played these epic sets, sometimes for hours on end, and the energy they created was electrifying. People were dancing in the aisles, in the dining cars, even in the baggage compartments. The Grateful Dead were all about community, about bringing people together through music, and that's exactly what happened on that train. Now, I wasn't on the Festival Express myself, but I've seen the footage, heard the stories, and let me tell you, it was legendary. The Dead's music had this way of transporting you, of making you forget about everything else but the moment. And on that train, Surrounded by all those other music lovers, it must have been pure magic. They say the Dead's music was like a runaway train itself, unpredictable, powerful, and full of surprises. And when you combine that with the actual runaway train that was the Festival Express, well, you've got yourself a recipe for one hell of a ride. They were the kings of the jam, man, and they brought their A-game to the Festival Express. It wasn't just the scheduled performances, either. The Dead were notorious for their impromptu jams, and the Festival Express was no exception. They'd just start playing in the middle of the night, in some random car on the train, and soon enough, other musicians would join in. It was like a musical free-for-all, and it perfectly captured the spirit of the whole event. So, hats off to the Grateful Dead man. They brought the jams, the energy, and the good vibes to the Festival Express. They were the ultimate train band, and their music helped make this one of the most legendary rock and roll journeys of all time. Now let's talk about Janice. Janice freaking Joplin, man. The queen of rock and roll herself. Her voice could blow the roof off any building, and on the Festival Express, it practically derailed the whole train. She was a force of nature, raw, powerful, and full of emotion. When Janice sang, you felt every word, every note, deep down in your soul. She held nothing back, and that's what made her so captivating. On the Festival Express, Janice was in her element. Surrounded by other musical giants, she was feeding off the energy, pushing herself to new heights. The footage of her performances on that train is just mind-blowing. You can see the fire in her eyes, the passion in her every move. She owned that stage, even if it was just a makeshift platform in a train car. Janice connected with the audience on a whole other level. She wasn't afraid to be vulnerable, to pour her heart out, and that resonated with people. She sang about love, about loss, about the struggles of everyday life, and her honesty was both refreshing and inspiring. On that train, surrounded by like-minded souls, Janice found the perfect outlet for her raw talent and unbridled spirit. She was a true original, a once-in-a-generation talent, and her presence on the Festival Express elevated the whole damn thing to legendary status. She was a whirlwind of energy, belting out those bluesy tunes like her life depended on it. The stories about Janice on that train are legendary too. She was known to party as hard as she played, and there are tales of her wild antics, her infectious laughter, and her ability to connect with anyone and everyone. Janice Joplin was more than just a singer. She was an icon, a symbol of rebellion and freedom. She represented a generation that was breaking down barriers and challenging the status quo. And on the Festival Express, she was unstoppable. So let's raise a glass to Janice, the queen of rock and roll, for gracing the Festival Express with her presence. Her music and her spirit live on, reminding us to always chase our dreams and never be afraid to let our freak flags fly. 
Now, we can't talk about the Festival Express without mentioning the band. These guys were already legends by this point, having backed up Bob Dylan and released their own string of classic albums. Their music was a perfect blend of rock and roll, blues and Americana, and it fit the vibe of the Festival Express perfectly. The band's music had this timeless quality to it, like it could have been written yesterday or a hundred years ago. It was roots music, but with a modern edge. And when they played live, they were tight, they were powerful, and they were damn near spiritual. On the Festival Express, the band brought a sense of history and gravitas to the proceedings. They were the elder statesmen of the group, but they could still rock with the best of them. Their performances were a masterclass in musicianship, with each member contributing their unique talents to create a rich and textured sound. One of the things that made the band so special was their songwriting. They wrote these incredible stories about everyday people, about love, about loss, about the human condition. And their music had this way of transporting you to another time and place. On that train, surrounded by the vast Canadian landscape, their music must have sounded absolutely magical. They were the real deal, man. True musicians, musicians. They had this quiet intensity to their performances, a depth of feeling that was impossible to ignore. And on the Festival Express, they added a touch of class and sophistication to the whole crazy affair. Next stop on the Festival Express Jefferson Airplane. These guys were pioneers of psychedelic rock, and they brought their own brand of San Francisco sound to the Canadian prairies. With my soaring vocals and our trippy experimental music, Jefferson Airplane expanded the minds of everyone on board. Man, when Grace Slick opened her mouth, it was like a portal to another dimension. Her voice was powerful, ethereal, and utterly captivating. And Jefferson Airplane's music was the perfect soundtrack for a psychedelic journey. Our music wasn't just about listening, it was about experiencing. It was about letting go of your inhibitions and embracing the unknown. And on the Festival Express, surrounded by all those free spirits, their music must have been absolutely transcendent. They were pushing boundaries, man, exploring new sonic territories. And they did it with such style and swagger. We were the epitome of cool, and our performances on the Festival Express were legendary. They were more than just a band, they were a cultural phenomenon. They represented the counterculture movement, the peace and love generation, and their music was a call to action. And on the Festival Express, they were spreading their message of love and freedom to everyone who would listen. Now, the Festival Express wasn't all about psychedelic rock. The Flying Burrito Brothers, led by the legendary Graham Parsons, brought a taste of country rock to the mix. They were a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, and a whole lot of awesome. I was a visionary man. I saw the connections between country music and rock and roll, and I wasn't afraid to blend them together. And the Flying Burrito Brothers were the perfect vehicle for his vision. They had that country twang, but they could also rock out with the best of them. And on the Festival Express, they added a touch of down-home flavor to the proceedings. Our music was all about heartbreak, about longing, about the search for meaning in a crazy world. And on that train, rolling through the vast Canadian landscape, their music must have sounded especially poignant. They were a breath of fresh air, man, bringing something different to the table. And they more than held their own alongside the other giants of rock. So. How do we know so much about this crazy train ride? Well, luckily for us, the whole thing was filmed. The Festival Express documentary, finally released in 2003, gives us an incredible glimpse into this unique moment in music history. It's like a time capsule, man, capturing the energy, the music and the spirit of the era. This wasn't just some concert film either. It captured everything, man. The impromptu jam sessions, the late night parties, the conversations between the musicians. You see these legends at their most raw and unguarded, just hanging out, making music and having a blast. It's a reminder that these were real people, man, with their own hopes, dreams and struggles. But when they got on that stage, they were larger than life. The documentary is a must see for any music fan, especially if you're into the music of the late 60s and early 70s. It's a reminder of a time when music felt truly alive, when anything seemed possible. 
Now, the scheduled concerts were amazing, no doubt, but what really made the Festival Express special were the spontaneous jams that would break out at any given moment. These weren't planned, man, they just happened. Musicians from different bands would get together in a train car, someone would start playing, and the next thing you know, you had a full-blown jam session going on. Imagine being a fly on the wall for those jams, man. Jerry Garcia trading licks with Robbie Robertson. Janis Joplin belting out a bluesy number with Rick Danko on bass. These were once-in-a-lifetime collaborations, and they happened organically, fueled by the creative energy that was flowing through that train. It was like a musical melting pot, with different styles and influences coming together to create something truly unique. These impromptu jams really captured the spirit of the Festival Express. It was all about freedom, about experimentation, about pushing the boundaries of music. And the fact that these legendary musicians were so willing to just let loose and jam with each other is a testament to the special atmosphere that had been created on that train. Man, the Festival Express wasn't just about the music. It was about the whole vibe, the atmosphere. Imagine a trainload of rock stars, fans and free spirits all travelling together through the Canadian wilderness. It was like a microcosm of the counterculture movement, a rolling party that celebrated peace, love and rock and roll. There were no rules on the Festival Express, man. It was all about letting loose, having fun and embracing the moment. The stories about what went down on that train are legendary. There was a lot of partying, a lot of laughter and a whole lot of music. It was a chance to escape the pressures of the outside world and just be yourself. Of course, it wasn't all sunshine and roses. There were delays, there were technical difficulties and there were probably a few hangovers along the way. But that was all part of the adventure, man. The Festival Express was a journey, both literally and figuratively. It was about embracing the unknown, taking risks and living life to the fullest. The Festival Express was a reminder that sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. It was about creating something special, something unique, something that would never be repeated. And for those who were lucky enough to be on board, it was an experience they would never forget. And there you have it, folks. The Festival Express was more than just a series of concerts. It was a rolling celebration of music, culture and the spirit of the 60s. It was a time when music could change the world and for a few glorious days in 1970 it felt like anything was possible. It was a time of creative freedom, of musical exploration and of pure, unadulterated joy. If you ever get a chance, check out the documentary to see this incredible journey for yourself. You won't be disappointed. The Festival Express was a reminder that music has the power to bring people together, to break down barriers and to create something truly special. Rock on.